hello and welcome to the first part of my 12 book project vlog which I will be doing throughout the course of 2023. Um, last year in December I had 12 people recommend me 12 books which turned into 11 people because my boyfriend recommended me two books which thank you. I'll link the TBR for that down below just so you know what I will be reading in this and also who recommended it to me. Um, I'll be going over that as I get all of the books, but just in general, like, that's sort of a plan for the, the year of reading recommended things. I have actually gone through and found access to all of these books. I had to purchase one, O Caledonia, which I should be getting in like a week or something, and everything else I can get from the library, which is fabulous. Two of those books have a bunch of holds at the library, so I'm gonna be waiting for them for several months um, before the coffee gets cold and Legends and Lattes both just have like, I'm on the list, <laughs> I'm waiting. It's probably gonna be summer before I get them. But I'm starting with one that my boyfriend recommended that he owns, which is A Scanner Darkly by Philip K. Dick. This is a sci-fi book about drugs and cops and I don't know. I've wanted to try Philip K. Dick for a minute. He's like, I don't know if he's a classic sci-fi author. I don't know if he's quite old enough for that, but like, he's at least almost a classic sci-fi author. Um, but this is not really the first one that I would have picked, but it's my boyfriend's favorite. So I will be reading it this month. It's almost the end of January. So I really got to get started on this. And I'm slightly concerned because <laughs> As I was talking about how excited I was to read all the books that had been recommended to me, my boyfriend goes, oh, but I really don't think you'll like either of the books I got you. Like, why? Like, why would you recommend me things that you don't think I'm going to like? What is the purpose? I, I don't know what he's doing, but mildly concerned for this. <laughs> Plan to start it soon and we'll hopefully be reading it. I expect I will probably cover six of the 12 books in this vlog, so... It's like January 20th right now and I really don't think I'll be starting this until I'll be finishing this, uploading it until like summer because I think I'm aiming for like one book a month. So if you're sitting in like July and this is coming up, thanks for watching. Apparently I made it to July in that case. <laughs> I've started reading Scanner Darkly. I read the first two chapters and so far I'm very confused. <laughs> It's not that I'm disliking it, I'm just too confused to enjoy it. Like, I don't know what's going on. Um, there's a lot of weird things. Apparently Philip K. Dick was not a fan of cops, which I didn't know, but like, I was in the first, I was in the second chapter, I think, and I was like, did Philip K. Dick hate cops? And my boyfriend was like, oh yeah, like, he hated cops. <laughs> like, I'm getting that vibe from this book. Like, it's not bad. Like, it is interesting. And I feel like I want to enjoy it, but it's just so confusing that I can't. So I'm hoping that that gets easier. And also, I was talking to my boyfriend, and he was like, oh, just wait, it gets really sexist and maybe racist. And I was like, what? I don't know why he recommended this to me, but he loves it. So hopefully it's not that sexist, ideally. Oh. Here's hoping. And then he wants to watch the movie with me after, so that'll be exciting and potentially headache inducing because I don't like that style of animation. I don't know. I'm hoping that if I give this some more time, I will get into it. I will understand what's going on and I will enjoy it because I want to. I have actually just gotten to the sexist part of the book, which is the introduction of female characters. Yeah, my boyfriend wasn't exaggerating, so that's lovely. Enjoying that. I am about halfway through with this, a little bit more, um, but I actually have thoughts now. I am less confused, like, I, I mean, I'm still, like, partially confused on account of you're kind of supposed to be, like, that's the point, you're following a bunch of drug addicts, so, like, a lot of what's happening is, like, kind of jumbled and, like, there aren't really like a lot there's not necessarily a lot of intent all the time with like the characters and what they're doing but I've got the greater gist of this book now like I can follow who these people are and like kind of what's going on so basically this is about this is sci-fi dystopic world um there's this drug that's kind of taken over everything called substance d and the cops are just 
uh, investigating people who deal substance D. Um, the main character is a cop, undercover cop, but the cops have also been infiltrated. So if they find out who the undercovers are, like the infiltrated fake pretend cops, they'll tell other people and then the cops will like get murdered. So basically the undercover cops have like an undercover persona for the cops. So like this dude is Bob Arthur and he is an undercover cop but when he goes to the cops he like hides his face he hides himself he goes by a pseudonym fred and he is fred at the cops and no one knows that he's actually bob arthur which like i understand in concept but for me that brings up so many questions at this point i'm like first of all how is he hired like because it seems like bob arthur is his real identity it's like not a made up thing but even if it was a made up thing like who made it up or who hired him if it's not like those are the two options it's a made up identity so who made it up and gave him his backstory and like gave him all the papers to um you know birth certificates and whatever and like backstopped his backstory or who hired him and knows that he is Bob Arthur like those are the two possibilities here there's no way they're just hiring like randoms off the street Second problem with that, at one point, they, like, listen to, like, his conversations, like, he uses, like, a microphone to, like, record so that they can build cases against people, which, again, makes sense. But here's the thing, people were listening in on that conversation, pulled him in, because they were like, yo, like, everyone on this conversation is obviously messed up because of drugs, so we gotta, like, give you some tests and make sure you're okay. Which makes sense, but then... <laughs> You think about that a little more like they don't know who he is but they know he was a part of that conversation of like five people so then you're like okay but like what about all the other conversations he's recorded like it is probably not that difficult to narrow down the common denominator in all of these different conversations like maybe not in like the same day but like over the course of weeks and months it should be abundantly clear who this dude is and like I just don't understand the logistics of that. Like, no one knows he's undercover. And I get that, like, the absolute stupidity of that is half of the point. Like, I get that. It works in some ways. Like, he is, at this point in the book, investigating himself. Like, he is told to go undercover as... Or not told to go undercover. He's told to make Bob Arctor, who's him, the main focus of his investigation. And, like, that's purposeful like the stupidity of the cops the like absolute nonsensical way that the police force works like philip k dick not a fan of cops and that's fine but then there are just like logistical things of like this clearly doesn't function and like would not continue to function you know just in terms of like how are people hired like how do people become these undercover cops and like he's recording i assume not every conversation but like a decent number of conversations so, like, you would assume that, like, they would know who he is by default. Like, I just don't understand. I have so many questions that are being answered that feel like potholes, and, like, I just can't get past it. But I'm not disliking it. Um, I definitely was worried at the beginning I was going to hate this, and I don't. Like, it's fine. It's not my favorite thing in the world, but, like, it's entertaining enough. It's just, like, it doesn't make sense. Like, there's so much of it that doesn't make sense. And I'm struggling to really care a lot. I'm, I want to watch the movie and see if maybe I connect with that better with the portrayals of the characters or if it's like more pointed and focused on certain things because it is very like rambly and jumbly and like intentionally so because it's about you know a bunch of drug addicts. <laughs> it's not gonna be like it's not gonna make a lot of sense. It's not supposed to make a lot of sense but like I don't know. It's okay. I'm just not loving it. So I'm gonna try to like get it finished up by tomorrow I hope today would be ideal but I've still got like 130 pages left so we'll see finish this <laughs> it's actually still the same day I kind of just really focused on it and got it done and it got better like I wasn't expecting it to get better and then I was like as it went on I was enjoying it more and more and it's like I understand what people get out of this and then I got to the author's note at the end and I was like oh wait no. 
<laughs> which is the weirdest thing because it was like I was enjoying it I was liking it I was down for the ride and I was like oh this is like great thematically like a lot of really interesting concepts about like the police and their incompetence and manipulation and like subversion of people's rights <laughs> like a lot of like interesting things because like this book was largely about that and then I get to the author's note at the end and he's like yeah this is a book about drug addicts and how that's an error in judgment <laughs> I didn't get that at all like like yes it was about drug addicts don't get me wrong like 100 percent this book was about a bunch of drug addicts and it reads like that really well like you hear that like jumbled narrative of like these people who can't really have stick to a coherent train of thought and you get that like really interesting jumbled narrative because of it which is why like it took me a long time to get into the book because it was like very intentionally like incohesive and that was really well done and like it was about drug addicts but like thematically like for me the important concepts were not was so much about their choices to do drugs or about them doing drugs at all it was more about like the systems put in place that like keep people down and like how the war on drugs isn't working and like I don't know it was just like it kind of made me like the book less because I was like well if this is what he was trying to do then a I disagree and b he failed for me but I liked my interpretation better I don't know I gave it three stars like it was fine I I enjoyed it to a point I think it took me a minute to get into it like a good long minute like at the halfway point I wasn't sure if I liked it at all yet but like the second half I enjoyed a whole lot more and I understand why people liked it and especially my boyfriend this very much seems like his type of book like I get why he really enjoys this and I also get why I wouldn't so much um but yeah I don't know it wasn't as bad as I expected it to be and even when reading it it just it kept getting better so I'll count that as a win I'd be down to try him again I have do Android's Dream of Electric Sheep which I will be reading at some point so this wasn't a total loss but also like not really a favor for me just kind of like something I read something that made me think something I probably won't really come back to ever again so it's time for part two of this vlog um I have Lark Ascending by Silas House which I checked out from the library and I have had it out for a minute and woke up this morning to a notice from the library that it's due in three days and can't be renewed so I have three days to read this um but it's like it's less than 300 pages and if it's good it shouldn't be a problem it's the weekend like if I can get it done in the next two days that's ideal um I I haven't started it yet but hopefully I really enjoy this because otherwise it's gonna be a rough few days trying to get this read so in my rush this morning to start reading this book and the panic of having to return it to the library soon I offered literally no introduction. This is Lark Ascending by Silas House, which was recommended to me by one for the books. So definitely go check out her channel. She's really wonderful. She reads a lot of like interesting sci-fi, which is what this is. This is, I'm gonna call it adult. Um, it feels very much YA because it is very coming of age, but the main character is like 20 for the most part, except when he's like looking back on his childhood. Um, but it's a sci-fi-esque dystopic novel about thank you splain <laughs> thank you splain sci-fi dystopic novel about america basically being taken over by christian fundamentalists and i think christian maybe just religious fundamentalists um uh, so far has been heavily implied that they're like christian um but that's not really like what it's about like that's kind of in the background almost like that is the catalyst for the events in this book but it's more so about like just his journey of finding who he is and like him being a refugee like leaving america first for canada and then for ireland and then finding out that ireland is in a safe place either and like losing his whole family and everyone he cares about and like his the only way of life he's ever known and it, it's just a lot more about his personal journey and kind of everything else is just like this really exquisitely done background 
to like his personal journey which I really enjoy like it reminds me a little bit of The Handmaid's Tale in that aspect like not just the religious fundamentalist but the way that it's very much a personal character journey and all of like the elements of the world like they are important to the story they do like impact what's the word I'm looking for I don't know they impact like the character and what's going they inform they inform on the character and their journey but like the main plot is the character and his journey and what's going on and everything else just kind of like you fill in the gaps where you need to but it's not just about the dystopic aspect which was very long-winded but I do really enjoy that I think it's really well done in that respect I two things I don't like this is a sad animal book and I don't like animal books I do not like hearing about animals going through bad things like I don't know why I have this problem because <laughs> I can read about like all manner of horrible things happening to people and like it will affect me emotionally like I can sit here and read a really sad book about someone going through something horrible and just like cry the whole time and it hurts my soul but like when it's like about an animal going through hard things I just find it unpleasant and I really don't like reading it like I don't know why there's a difference there but there is for me um and it's weird because it's like books that are about people will have much more of an impact emotional impact on me than like sad animal stuff but like I just find the one unpleasant and I don't like reading it so that's a little bit hard because there's like a dog plot line in this and you do get the dog's perspective which I wasn't expecting and which is a little bit weird I definitely prefer it when we're following the main character Lark and kind of his journey and his family story um and then the other thing I don't love is the writing style I'm kind of struggling with it and I'm hoping that as I go through I'm like almost 100 pages in right now I'll get more used to it but it's a weird style because it's like it's in present tense where he's talking from the future um, as an old man like that's how the story starts of him like I'm going to tell you my story um, I'm going to tell you what I went through and then it kind of falls into past tense as he's talking about what happened in the past but it always very much feels like you're not experiencing the story as it's happening you're hearing him tell you about what happened in the past and because of that it feels very like explanatory like he's sitting here like explaining these things telling these things and there's like a weird distance from this book that I'm not really loving the second sentence of this book is so now in my old age I need to begin with our journey when my parents and I crossed the wide Atlantic in the hopes of sanctuary on the green island of Ireland like he's he's telling this from old age I don't know how old or what happened to him in his life but like it's him looking back on his story and I'm not loving that because it does just make it feel like I'm not experiencing this as like immediately as I would like it doesn't feel as like raw and authentic because there is that distance I don't love it but it's it's also not like bad and there's a lot that I really really love about this I love the way he's telling the story like I love the elements of it I love the way it's all tied together I love his journey like it's I like I really really want to love it I just feel like the writing is really holding me back so hopefully that gets a little better for me but I do think this is probably going to be a very worthwhile book but also one that I don't know if I would read Silas House again it's also very old-fashioned like the writing style feels very old-fashioned like if you told me parts of this were about like refugees from the 1800s I would believe you because it feels like that kind of like storytelling like you know when you read a historical fiction and you're just like oh this feels old like that's like the vibe I get from this even though it's like a dystopic future which is odd but not necessarily bad I just don't think it's very much for me I read another about 100 pages I don't have much left but I wanted to update in case anything happens in the end that I want to talk about um don't have much to say that I didn't say before though it's really good it's really well crafted like the story the characters the world it's all really well done I'm just still not really getting along with the narrative style and the way he chose to tell the story and I still don't love the dog's 
point of view. It's always like kind of weird when it comes out. Like it's well done for what it is. I just, it, it doesn't add as much to the story as like Lark's perspective. Lark is who I care about. The dog is kind of like, I'm not as interested in the dog's history or insights or whatever, but I really love the details he chooses to talk about um, or to bring up. Like when they're on the boat um, going from America to Ireland, it's really a lot about like people are dying and like bad things are happening. And it's just like the details that he chooses are really, really wonderful. And just like so well thought out and so brief almost like like it's just like minimal kind of and so well done and just like I don't know it's fantastic just like the choice of detail is fantastic I wish it I like the writing style better because I do feel like I could like truly love this like I'm having such a good time and it's such a fast read which I'm really like grateful for um it's still the same day I just changed my shirt but like I don't know I'm really, I'm really enjoying it, just like probably more of like a four star than anything else, but like, I don't know, I'm gonna keep reading. I'll finish it today. I'm really glad it was a quick read because I just feel like I needed that right now, but yeah, it's pretty wonderful. I just realized I never actually finished my last clip. <laughs> Larry's ending was really good. I gave it four stars. I had nothing to say about the ending. Um, not in a negative way, just like I already said everything I needed to say. So that being said, it is now the end of March. I haven't read my March book yet, but I just got two books from the library. Um, so these will be my next two reads. I have Legends and Lattes by Travis Baldry, which was recommended to me by Constellation Library over on Instagram. And then I have Before the Coffee Gets Cold by Toshi Kazuko Gucci which was recommended to me by my best friend. Um, so I'm going with this first, clearly, as you can see the bookmark. Um, mostly because I've been super hyped for this book for years. It sounds like something I would really enjoy. She said she cried at every book in this trilogy. So I'm looking forward to that. And I'm very concerned about Legends and Lattes. Um, I don't read a lot of fantasy and I don't like low stakes books and like kind of fluffy, like, nice happy things going on books I like for my books to be sad and tragic so I am concerned about that one but I also know how much love it gets so hopefully I will really enjoy it but um this will be my current read it's like the 24th of March today and I would like to get both of these done by the end of the month because they're both due in three weeks anyway so like if I could just knock them both out and get April's month April's book done too that would be fantastic but I have really high expectations for this one. If I don't adore it, like five star, this is amazing. I'm going to be very disappointed. So I am reading this. I did decide to go with this. Just, I feel like I was going to like it more. And I'm, I, don't, I think it needs more time. Um, I'm, I read the first chapter, novella. I don't know. It's kind of a collection in some ways rather than like one singular narrative um i read the first one it was good i didn't love it but i feel like this might be the kind of book that like amps up the emotion with each one like it starts off just like oh here's like a sweet story and then it just like gets more each time anyway my favorite thing about this so far is that for a book about a coffee shop where they all have to drink coffee it's really obvious that the author does not like coffee because like she just complains about it constantly and not just like the character from the first one because like I've started reading the second one I'm getting vibes that the author just really doesn't like coffee which amuses me but I'm gonna read this more and hopefully cry I kept being told I would cry at this book and the first one didn't make me cry which concerns me because I just really want to cry I have been planning to update again apart from like my brief thoughts last night before I fell asleep but I finished the book it's lovely it's just like the ultimate like bittersweet story or stories plural it's like four short stories um 
about this coffee shop where you go and you sit and you drink a cup of coffee and you can travel through time or not travel you can travel in time to a specific point until your coffee gets cold so you have a few minutes you know and this just covers four people who chose to do that and like why and it's sad and it's lovely and bittersweet it's just like so bittersweet i gave it four stars i did really honestly want to love it more like it's lovely and lovely that's the word i keep coming back to because it really really is like it is so lovely and i really enjoyed it but i didn't love it and i really really wanted to love it i was like honestly thinking that i would fall in love with this book and i didn't like it was very enjoyable but i didn't really love it which is sad to me <laughs> but i'm trying to get over that because it was like a very enjoyable experience i cried a little at three of the four stories like it was very worthwhile to read. I might read the sequels. I have the third one because my friend gave it to me. So, like, I might read them. I might read them out of order. I'm going to check with her to see if, like, I can. <laughs> but, like, I don't know. I just wanted it to be, like, amazing. And it wasn't that for me. It was just, like, enjoyable and lovely. And, I don't know, it was a good time. If you like just, like, kind of quiet, bittersweet stories, I would really recommend this. I don't think you'll regret reading it. I didn't sob. I could have sobbed and it just like, it was like little tears, which is fine. <laughs> it was a good book. Um, I'm glad I finally read it. Um, so now this is done. Um, the next thing I have to read, because I'm just jumping right into it, Legends and Lattes, because it's still due in two and a half weeks. So like, why wait until April when I have it now and I could finish it by the end of the month? And then I don't have to edit the cover into my, my wrap up video because I've still got like, what, four or five days left in this month? Six? I don't know what day today is. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna be reading this. And it's like a little less than 300 pages. It shouldn't take me very long. It's Saturday, so maybe I could even read it over the weekend. We'll see. I am just worried that I'm not going to care. I like stories with stakes. I like when things are painful and sad. I like to have my soul crushed by books like that's what gets me really invested when like the characters are experiencing pain and I can relate to them and when things are like fluffy and fun I just don't really care like it's like oh that could be a nice story but I'm like so bored and not invested so like that's kind of my concern for this but we'll see I'm hoping that it's better than I expect it to be because I know it's not entirely just like mindless fluff like, I know there are things that happen, but it's just like, I like pain, I like suffering. <laughs> but everyone loves this, so I'm hoping that, like, I'll have a really good time. Um, but this is definitely not one that I would have ever picked up had it not been on this list. So, interesting experiment here. I have made progress on Legends and Lattes. Um, not loving it so far. Like, I do really like his writing style. That's, like the thing that's keeping me going you know like it's it's really enjoyable it flows really well but it's just like boring like so far so much of it is just how to run a cafe and like how to run a cafe you know like it starts with like her building the cafe from like this old rundown building and then like adding things to the menu and advertising and hiring employees and like how much to charge and it's just like why like I don't care and there's like so little character backstory so far I assume there will be more but it's just like I don't really care about the characters I don't know much about them it's just like about the cafe and the setup and the running it and I'm just like and it's all so easy like she advertises something and then it like works and her cafe is booming and like she hires an employee like randomly and they turn out to be the best employee ever and like she's making tons of money and it's just like I don't know it doesn't like nothing about this really hits or like feels good or like I don't know I just like it's not bad like I, I feel like it's gonna be a solid three stars but it's just like dull and I just don't care. I'm not invested. Like I'm trying, I'm really trying, but like, I don't know. Um, this is kind of what I was worried I was gonna feel, but it's so much about the cafe. Like I don't understand like why all these people who love this book are just like so into the running of this cafe. 
I don't know, maybe I'm the odd one out here, but like, I just find it dull. I finished Legends and Lattes actually several days ago, and then I never updated. <laughs> I forgot. I've been doing this a lot lately because I'm reading too many different books for too many different vlogs, and I'm like getting confused. Um, I finished this three stars. Um, I did like it better than I thought I was going to. The writing style is really lovely. I think he's a wonderful writer, like just in terms of like the words and like the structure and like the pacing, like it was all really well done. Um, my main issue was kind of just that like it focused way too much on the coffee shop for my taste. Like I didn't care about the coffee shop. Like the coffee shop was like the vehicle for the story for me, like kind of in the same sense of before the coffee gets cold. like. That whole story takes place in a coffee shop as well, but like, it's not literally about the coffee shop. Whereas this book very much is about the coffee shop. It's about building the coffee shop. Like that is the main focus of the story. And like, there are other things going on. Like there's character development, there's relationship growth, there's like all kinds of things, but like, it kind of all takes a backseat to the coffee shop. And I really would have liked it to be like, flipped you know like there wasn't enough about the characters for me I would have loved to know more about the characters I would have loved for more of their backstories and more of their lives and like the relationship the romantic relationship that happens in this book it felt like it happened too fast like I never really got like good chemistry from them and like I just wanted more time for them and like more time for the characters and more time for like I don't know, the things that I felt were important and like less so the coffee shop itself. Um, like not that it was bad, like this was three stars, it was very enjoyable. It wasn't that much worse than, well I don't want to say like that, that sounds negative. My feelings are not that much different for this than they were for Before the Coffee Gets Gold, even though that was four and this is three. Like they were both kind of borderline and this one, I don't know, I felt like it was just a little bit short, <laughs> whereas that one was just like a little bit more um but they were like very similar feelings like I really enjoyed both of these books I didn't really like love either of them which is a little bit unfortunate um would have liked to have loved something um so far the best book I've read for this has been Like Ascending by Silas House so that's fun um I don't know what I'm reading next <laughs> Um, these are both going back to the library. I have to figure out what I'm reading next and then I will check in and hopefully read something for April even though it's still March. So I read two books in March to get myself just a little bit ahead. It's April and I'm reading my April book which is book five of this already. Um, but I'm not gonna finish this until May. Um, my week kind of got away from me so it's the 30th of April today. I'm like just shy of a hundred pages in to These Bleeding Shadows by Kate Alice Marshall, which is a young adult horror novel. Um, this was recommended by Spines and Spoilers. Um, and I feel like this was one of the ones that I was most concerned about reading um, because I don't really do horror much. And the horror that I do is much more like monster horror. Like, I really liked Into the Drowning Deep by Mira Grant. I don't do supernatural horror, like, at all. Like, I've always struggled with it a lot. And this is, like, kind of a haunted house-esque. Essentially, this teenage girl goes back to, like, her family home for the first time since she was a very young child and finds out that she is inheriting this house from her grandfather. Like, her you know, her family home that's like this giant manor. Um, weird things are happening like within the house and like around her and it's very like haunted house vibes. And I was just, I do want to try more horror, but I just don't like it a lot. So I was very concerned about this, but I don't want to speak too soon because I am like 87 pages in or something, 85. Um, I kind of like it a lot. <laughs> Uh, I really like uh, her writing style. It's wonderful. I like so many of the conversations are like very expository. Like they're just like kind of explaining things. Oh, you, the main character, know nothing. Let me sit here and explain like the history of this house or let me explain this. 
but it feels like kind of in a natural way, whereas so often it feels just like jarring and like it's for me as the reader and not the character. And it's just like I'm actively like enjoying that aspect of it. And I like the characters and I really like all their interactions and like I kind of even like the horror elements, like the supernatural, like it's very interesting and I'm down. So I'm, I'm still only at the very beginning. I don't know how it will go from here. It might like get terrible. I don't know. Um, I'm trying not to like get my hopes up too high because I don't want to like lead into disappointment, but I am really liking it so far. Um, so far, everything I've read has been good. So people have good taste. Um, but yes, I'm going to continue on with this and I will update you and hopefully it continues to be wonderful for me. So I have made more progress on these wig shadows and it's still really good. I'm almost done. I'll probably finish it, which is why I'm filming an update now. Um, it's really good. <laughs> like It just kind of keeps getting better. Um, it's definitely the first time I've actively enjoyed a supernatural horror book, which is cool. Uh, it doesn't exactly make me want to read more from the genre. Because I feel like it's more that, like, this book is doing a really good job versus I actually like supernatural elements. Because I am struggling a little bit with, like, there's this thing that's called, like, The Other. And it's, I don't know, a demonic godlike thing. Um, it's a very powerful supernatural being. <laughs> it's a little weird. Um, and I am struggling a little bit with that. But, like... It's just so well done like apart from that like and even that is like really interesting it's just like not super my vibe but like everything else is so good i love the characters i love the romance like the romance is so cute like it's like these two teenagers that are just like down for each other and it's like oh, i'm i'm rooting for them so much and like i like the dialogue and i kind of like all the little elements that are going on and like kind of like the family dynamic because it's a lot about like her extended family that she's not super close with and it's just like really interesting and I really want answers because it's like some things are very obvious and then some things are like very up in the air and it's just like it's a really well done story um so I'm super excited to keep going finish this. I have finished these fleeting shadows. I was enjoying this for the whole book. Um it was really wonderfully written. I kind of thought from the beginning that I was going to be giving this four stars because like it was really good. I was really enjoying it. Some of the horror stuff was a little like beyond me, you know, like not my thing. I wasn't really loving that aspect, but like everything was so well done. The characters were fantastic. The setting was so cool and so interesting. And then as we got into like the ending, it just got better and better and like so meaningful and like... I loved, I don't know, the, what it meant, you know, like, I don't want to talk about spoilers, and it's, like, impossible for me to talk about, like, the things I loved about the ending without spoilers, but if you at all like supernatural horror, um, it is YA, but, like, it might as well be adult, to be honest, um, if you at all like supernatural horror, especially, like, I want to say on the lighter side, but this was not like, well, it was a little bit gory. Um, <laughs> I was going to say on the lighter side, but I don't think this was that light. But if you do like supernatural horror, like for sure pick this up. Like I gave it five stars. Like this is the first time I've ever liked supernatural horror and I gave it five stars. Like I just, oh, my love for this. This was so amazing. This was so wonderful. Like I definitely want to read something else by her because just like her writing and this was so beautiful and like the story and like the way it came together at the end and the entire ending was mesmerizing and like, oh my gosh. Um, I highly recommend if you at all like this kind of thing read this because it was wonderful um for sure she's also written middle grade i don't know that i'd be super interested in her middle grade but like i do want to try her again because this was just like this blew me away <laughs> this kind of just like 
destroyed my soul. It made me cry. It just, it was wonderful. Um, so I've been keeping a ranking of all the books I've read. So this is for sure my favorite of this video, of this project so far. I had such a good time. Like I just, I, I, I apologize that I can't really talk about the specifics of the things I loved because it was just like the whole ending and everything that the ending meant and everything that the ending did and it just all worked so perfectly within this story and it made every other element of the story better and it's like I cannot say anything about it because like it is like I mean it is a plot twist but it's more it's more than just the fact that it was a plot twist because it's like you kind of start to see it coming for a minute it's just like everything else like because you spend a long time after the the twist happens like that like the plot twist is not the end of the story it's just like there's so much more and like you really delve into like what it means and like oh, it was wonderful um I do want to get myself a copy of this book because it was so good it was just like such a happy making wonderful experience that I cannot recommend enough because it was just gorgeous um I don't know what else it's May I don't know what else I'm gonna read in May <laughs> I would like to read another thing just to like stay that little bit ahead potentially Percy Jackson just because I know that's gonna be a quick one you know unless I decide that I want to read that whole series in which case it would not be a quick one because there are like 18,000 books in that world I think um but this was great this was everything it could possibly have been and so much more <laughs> it made me really really happy I've finally made it on to the final book of the vlog, which is Percy Jackson, um, The Lightning Thief by Rick Riordan. Um, making progress on this. I read like 70 pages yesterday. Um, it's going by really fast. Like, it's kind of a thick book. Like, I'm not gonna lie, when I picked it up from the library, I was like, oh, that's a bit larger than I was really expecting for this, you know, first book in a middle grade fantasy series. But it's it's really only like 375 pages and like it's middle grade with like big font and big margins it's going by really fast um I don't love it which like I was concerned going in that I was going to hate it but I was also concerned that I was going to love it and just like need to read the rest of the series and like I know there's a lot and like I don't I don't really have the capacity to get into like however many books long this series is because I know like there's also like the next series that's like connected to this series and like maybe another series. I don't know. There's a lot going on in this world. But <laughs> it's just like, it's kind of not for me. Like not in a bad way. It's I don't think it's bad. It's just like, it has a very like chatty writing style, like addressing the reader directly. Percy's kind of making jokes and the narrative to the reader. And I don't really love that. And like, there are things that happen in this like I don't think it's a spoiler I'm only 70 pages in like his mother gets zapped and I don't know if she's dead or not I think not but like you're supposed to believe she's dead regardless and there's almost no reaction to it like Percy's sad he's like oh I'm grieving for my mother because he thinks she's dead and like no one's kind of sad otherwise but like he kind of moved on really fast and like no one's really brought it up apart from like oh I'm sorry about your mother's fate uh, and it's like I kind of expect that to be a very traumatizing experience because like all he has in his life is his mother and I, I would really expect that to be like a huge deal like even in middle grade like you gotta like handle heavy topics like that if you're gonna have them in your book and like it kind of bugs me that it just like she died and now we're just like okay let's go back to making jokes about his teacher's a centaur and he's concerned about walking behind him in case he poops like this that's not where i'm at after his mother's uh, alleged death um yeah i don't know but i'm not disliking it either it's fun like it's fun it's quick i plan on finishing it hopefully really fast because like it's going by super quick um and i think maybe once i get more into it the writing style will flow a little bit easier for me but we'll see we'll see um i gotta i feel like by the end i'm gonna like it more than i like the beginning
important note that I somehow forgot to mention. This was recommended to me by Javier, who is one of my subscribers and comments, and he- I know he really loves this. Um, so yes, he will be linked down below, and I apologize for not including that in the first clip. I am making progress on Percy Jackson. Um, it's fun. I have like a hundred pages left. Like, I just don't have tons to say about this book. Like, it's a fun time. It's clearly meant for a much younger audience, which is fine. It's really obvious in a way that I don't like. And I know that's not really a complaint because this is meant for 12 year olds and I'm 30. <laughs> and I don't mind guessing plot twists. It's just for this book, I kind of feel like I know what's going to happen. And I'm at a point where I'm just like, waiting for the thing to happen like it's not like i know what's going to happen and i'm having fun on these other adventures it's just like i'm just kind of waiting for the thing to happen and for the characters to like realize what's going on um so i'm struggling like a little bit with that but like the writing is really quick and easy and fun and the story is just like lovely and i like the characters and it's like good in all the ways just like I'm not really into Greek myths, so I'm struggling like a little bit with that and just like Greek myths remind me of like school, uh, to be honest. And I don't know if that's really fair because I do think that's making me enjoy this book less because I'm relating to so many of these Greek myths that like I learned about in school and I'm like I'm not really wanting to get school vibes. Um, but it is fun. So I'm gonna probably finish this up today because it is like a super quick read and I'm enjoying it even if it's not like my favorite thing ever. I have finished The Lightning Thief. Um, same general thoughts. Like I don't have much to add to this book. Like I feel like I already said everything there is to say. Like it's really fun. It's a good time. I have nothing like negative to say about it. It's geared towards 12 year olds and I'm not a 12 year old and it's like a really fun time and it's the kind of book that vibes me like I would get along with later books in the series better like as the characters age and mature because I assume they get significantly older throughout the books and it's like I would be I would be down to read that and continue on but it's just like there are four more books in this series and then there are five more books in the companion series and I just don't have the energy like to be perfectly honest like it's too many books for how much I cared about this like it's fun but that was kind of about it for me so I gave it three stars like a very enjoyable like good time three stars but I don't know I don't really I don't, I'm not gonna continue on but it was a good time I really liked the ending I love the drama of it I'm not the biggest fan of like Greek myth Mythology. Um, it always feels so school to me and it's just like not a super fun vibe but like this was a good time I don't know I don't regret reading it which is basically what I look for it was I, I'm I am actually glad I tried it I was worried that like I was really gonna dislike it and like I didn't so I'm gonna count this as a victory and with finishing this book I am now halfway through my 12 books of 2023 list so that concludes this vlog. Um, I will link everyone that I mentioned down below. I will list the books down below. I've been doing this for like six months now, so I don't even remember what all I've talked about. But thank you for watching um, and tune in in I guess another six months when I read the other six books that were recommended to me this year. As always, thank you so much for watching and I will see y'all again soon.